It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The security office of the PB&J Logistics Company. A bedraggled stranger enters who has lost his way. Hi, I seem to have lost my way. Sorry, I don't give directions. The man's name is Bernie Felger. My name is Bernie Felger. He has wandered a long way. I've been wandering a long way out there, back and forth, trying to find the entrance to this place. Well, yippee for you. He has come to fulfill his assignment. Listen, I've come to fulfill my assignment. And who would you be exactly? Bernie Felger, the bedraggled stranger, the lost wanderer who is on a personal quest for gainful employment. But in the meantime, he is obligated to fulfill his current assignment as a temp. I'm the temp. This is his story. The Temp, a double M production starring Michael Wilhelm as The Temp, also starring Lorraine Knox as his wife and featuring Larry Bauer, Jaden Moore, Scott Kump, Bridget Bogdan, Teresa Bauer, and Dennis Nichols. Today's episode, Voices. You're late. Well, like I said, I couldn't find the entrance. I mean, your sign's not even lit up. You've got all the windows boarded up. They had some trouble. Come on. Trouble? What, what, what kind of trouble? I don't know the whole story. I just know that you caused me to be late ending my shift. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I okay, here we are. You are to work in here. Where is everybody? Out. Where is the supervisor? Uh, not here. Are they coming? Eventually, I suppose. Well, is, is there another security guard? You're it, bub. I'm the night guard and you're the day shift. Well, what what am I supposed to be doing exactly? Beats me. Well, why is it so dark in here? Trouble. But, I... What have I gotten myself into? Hello? Anybody here? So dark. I can hardly see my way around here. Wait, that, that looks like an office of some sort over there. Hello, hi, I'm the temp that you ordered... No one here. And, and no, no lights? But the radio's going? Now, how is it? Oh, batteries. It's like everyone just disappeared. There's a pencil still in the sharpener. Stop that. Just stop it. Your imagination is, is running wild. There has to be a logical explanation for this. All right, I'm calling Freddy. How can I help you? Freddy, Freddy, this is Bernie Felger. Bernie, hey, you there yet? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, I'm here. You get logged in? Oh, yeah, um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, but, Freddy, there, there's a problem. What's wrong? There's something missing here, Freddy. What's missing? People. There are no people. I'm looking around here, and, and I see a half-eaten donut, coffee sitting out, a book that's lying open. I think somebody was clipping their nails. But everyone is gone. It's just like the Mary Celeste. Who? Oh, you know that ship that they found adrift 100 years ago? The crew was missing. No one was on board. I'm telling you, aside from the missing nautical equipment, it's a Mary Celeste story all over again. Don't panic. There's a perfectly good explanation. I'm I'm not panicking, but I get a little unnerved when I get sent on an assignment and there's no one here to sign my time card. We don't use time cards anymore. You know what I mean. I mean... Where, where is everybody? The police locked them out. The police? Apparently, the manager and some of the employees were smuggling contraband across state lines, and they got nailed. So the police put the place under lockdown and forced everyone out. So this is a crime scene? Is there any police tape anywhere? I don't see any. Any chalk figures framed on the door? No. Then it's probably not an official crime scene. What am I doing here? The corporation couldn't afford to shut down this office, so they needed someone to ban the phones. People are going to call here. They still have people with their valuables in transit. They will need to contact the office and find out where their stuff is. Well, what am I supposed to tell them? Tell them that someone will call. Who's going to call? There's no one here. The district manager is on his way. He should be there in a day or two. A day or two? 
Come on, it's an easy assignment. Good pay for doing very little. Just don't touch anything. Well, I'm going to have to touch the phone. I mean, don't touch anything you don't have to touch. You could corrupt the evidence. Why are the lights on at half mass? I mean, it's creepy in here. They decided to cut down on the power. They had security pull the fuses from the fuse box. They're using the backup lights. No need to have full power for just one person. Aye, Captain. We have to divert power to the forward thrusters. So life support's gonna take a wee bit of a dip. What was that? Nothing. You're quoting again. Was that Star Trek? No, I'm ad-libbing. Why do you do that? It gives me comfort. Well, settle in for the ride. You should be fine. But... The easiest ten dollars an hour you ever made. Ten? Oh, my other line's ringing. Gotta go. Fred. F Freddy. Don't you... Frederick! Great. Okay. So, I'm alone. <sighs> it's dark and creepy. Uh, let's investigate the scene of the... Cr no, I mean, we'll just look around here. Uh-huh. I was walking through the lab late one night when it... Stop it! Now just, just stop it! My imagination is running amok. Oh, 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 whoa, what's in here? <coughs> Must be the warehouse. It's huge and empty. Just like that scene in Dracula. I'm alone in the castle! I'm alone in the castle! <laughs> I scared myself. That was really stupid. I am so glad nobody saw me do that. Okay, let's just calm down. There, I think I'm gonna pass out. I did that too fast. I gotta sit down. Okay, that's better. Oh boy, this is a nice desk. I wonder whose it is. There's a cup of coffee. That is really old coffee. Look at all the pictures, Oh, Must be your family. Oh, that's a greeting card. <laughs> Let me read it, yeah. My dearest Glenadine, oh. last night was very special. The moon was high, and so was our passion. Oh, whoa! Uh, <laughs> don't need to read any more of that. <laughs> Who knew they even made greeting cards like that? Well, that's a cute little cactus. Look at those little. Ow! Oh! Oh! No! 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 no. Coffee all over the. I, I need. I need something. Tissues. Grab the tissues. Okay. Dab, 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 dab. Right there. Okay. That looks good. Good. Oh, they're gonna have to buy a new keyboard, though. <laughs> What's that? Hello? Shaggy? <laughs> Scooby-Doo? <laughs> ah! Oh. <laughs> um, hello, this is, uh, PB and J... Logistics, yes. Uh, hello, hello. All right, where is he? Uh, excuse me? I want to know what you've done with him. Who? Pepper Jack. What, the cheese? He's my dachshund. Your dog? You're, you're, you're calling a movie company about your dog. You were supposed to move him. I'm not sure, but I, I don't believe that we move livestock. He's not livestock, he's a dog. Well, livestock refers to animals, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that dogs fall under that category. Don't be such a smarty pants. I want to know what you've done with him. My furniture arrived yesterday, but no Pepper Jack. I'm not quite following you. Look, I left him in his dog carrier, and all you needed to do was load him up on the truck. Oh, no. I am so sorry. Uh, look, I, I don't know what to say. Look, you might want to call the moving company that you used. I am calling the moving company. You're the moving company. Right. Oh. Mm. Uh, I'll have my supervisor call you. I don't want anyone to call me. I want Pepper Jack. Well, I can't... I move around the world all the time. I know how this works. How long have you been in this business? Oh, this particular business, about 45 minutes now. Ah, a greenhorn. I'm on the phone with a greenhorn.
Greenhorn. A green? Listen to me carefully, Mr. Greenhorn. It's Bernie, actually. I am putting out an APB on Pepper Jack, and if anything happened to him, I am suing you and your moving company for every cent you've got. Well, at $10 an hour, you're not going to get very much, are you? <laughs> and so it begins. PB and J Logistics. Hello? Yes, hello. Who is this? Uh, but Bernie, who is this? Bernie who? Felger, B Bernie Felger. Who is Bernie Felger? I'm Bernie Felger. Who are you? Glenadine. I work there. Glenadine. Or I did. That name sounds familiar. What are you doing there? Well, I was hired to answer the phone. That was my job. I'm sorry. Do you know when they're going to allow us to get back in and get our stuff? I couldn't say. I mean, they told me the district manager was coming in in a day or two. Mr. Obler? Obler? That's his name? Well, it fits him, believe me. Well, I'll ask him when he gets here. Maybe you could do me a favor. What do you need? Well, my desk is the one closest to the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I left a card on my desk that I would appreciate it if you would stick in my drawer. Oh, you're that Glenadine. What? You read it? No, no, no. I, I didn't read anything. I, I, look, I just got here. You're sure? Yeah, certain. Now, now, where is this alleged card? Sitting up in front of my potted cactus. The card with the black and white red lace? Well, how did you know that? Did you read no, it? No, no, honestly, it's just that, well, you know, black, white, and red lace tends to stick out. Could you just shove it in the drawer for me? Well, I don't know. I'm not supposed to touch anything. It's a crime scene, you know. I know, but it's not like you're removing evidence. Well, I don't think I should. Please, no one would ever know. It would just be between you and me. Yeah, and Jeffrey. No, I didn't. I, well, I, I, not all of it. I mean, I, I started to, but I, I put it, I, I stopped. Please. I can't believe this. I am humiliated. I'm gonna die. Hello, hello, hello Glenadine, don't, don't die. I, I didn't read it. I'm a perfect gentleman. Could you pass the cornflakes? Here. What? You ate them all? I'm sorry, honey. I, I finished them up. So I see. I'll have a grapefruit, then. Here you go. You still handling the phones at work by yourself? Oh, yeah. And the callers are not happy. This girl calls up, and she's moving to Auburn College, and she's waiting at the dorm, and her stuff hasn't arrived, so I told her someone would call her. The next day, the dorm supervisor called, wanted to know when her stuff was going to arrive. I told him someone would call him. Well, the next day, the girl's father called. He's smoking under the collar, using all sorts of colorful metaphors. I had to tell him someone would call him. Well, the next day, the father's lawyer threatened with a lawsuit and possible criminal charges. I told him someone would call him. Whenever this Mr. Obler shows up, he's going to have his hands full. It's been a week and a half. I know. And I feel like the night watchman at Five Nights at Freddy's. I keep hearing weird noises coming from the warehouse area. Did you check it out? Well, I checked it out when I first got there. There was nothing in it. There was no lights. It's pitch black in there, and I really don't want to go back in there again. At least you're getting a paycheck out of it. Only $10 an hour. But added to your income, it, it helps. That's barely better than your unemployment. Well, with taxes, it's even less. Then you're just wasting your time. Well, not really. If this Mr. Obler does show up, I can slip him my resume. He's going to need to restaff the place, and he would be a good fit for me. If you can stop being silly long enough, he might actually consider hiring you. Penny, I am not silly. A serious guy doesn't burst out in silly voices and accents. I don't burst out. Especially that one voice that's really annoying. Fred Gwynn. No, no, you mean Ed Wynn, not Fred Gwynn. Oh, well, excuse me. Fred Gwynn played Herman Munster on TV. Edwin was a radio comedian most noted for being the voice of the Mad Hatter in Disney's animated version of Alice in Wonderland. Well, during the interview, you'll need to hold back on the funny voices. I have never used a funny voice in an interview. I did, however, use it to get out of jury duty once. <laughs> I remember that. The defense attorney had me on the stand, and he asked me, he said, Mr. Felger... In your own words, would you tell the court the facts of the case as you understand them? And so I told him, yes, yes, I can. You see, the queen of hearts, she sold some tots, you know, all on a summer's day. And the knave of hearts, he stole those tots, that nasty little knave. He just swept them clean away. 
I have never seen a lawyer unable to speak before. <laughs> he just stood there staring at me. <laughs> well, it worked. Judge dismissed me. <laughs> he threw you out of the court, pending his decision on whether he was going to charge you with contempt. Trust me, if I get an interview with Mr. Obler, I will not use that voice. With a name like that, he deserves a good, solid German voice. Ja, Herr Commander. You're hopeless. Why did you ever marry me? Our TV went out and you were the next best thing. So it wasn't love? <laughs> no, honey. It was for entertainment purposes only. PB&J Logistics, how may I help you? What have you done with my stuff? Sorry, but uh, you'll need to talk to the manager and he is not here right now. Um, I can have him call you. I am not stupid. I realize that you were only the first line of defense and that you don't know anything. So, let me talk to your supervisor. I would love to, ma'am. Believe me. But he is unavailable right now. Well, you better make him available because I am not hanging up until I talk with him. Okay, um, I'll just put you on hold while I go get him. You will not. You will leave this line open. I don't want you taking any more calls until I get through to someone. Right, an open line. All right, I'm just going to set the headset on the desk while I go and get him away from his very important meeting. Fine. I will wait. Okay, now what? I could just hang up on her, but she'll call right back. Think, 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 think. Uh, she needs to talk to someone that'll make her hang up. But I'm the only one here. Wait a minute. I shouldn't do this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I should. <laughs> Hello? Hello, who is this, please? What? Huh? Who? You don't know who you are, and they think I'm crazy. Oh, my tail and whiskers. I'm going to be late, you know. What is this? Well, I'm not too sure, but I think I can take a stab at it. It looks like a phone to me. How does it look on your side? Oh, you are insane. I'm calling the police. Have fun explaining that one. Oh, that wasn't in the warehouse. Okay, I'm gonna lock myself in the office and call the police. Halt! I'm gonna die right here, killed by what looks like the great pumpkin. Good grief. I am Obler. Of course you are. What an entrance. Nice to finally meet you, Mr. Obler. I've been waiting for you for such a long time. A week and a half, to be exact. I was detained. I know. Well, I have tried to keep the home fires burning until you... Fire! Got here. There is a fire? No, no, no. no. It, it, it's just an expression. You Americans and your expressions. What is wrong? Why are you looking at me that way? Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to stare, but I... Never actually seen someone who wears an eye patch and a monocle at the same time. I have an eye infection, and the monocle is to help me focus. But you have them on the same eye. <laughs> it is a right handed monocle, it only fits the right side. But why wear. Never mind! Let us get going here. Aye, aye. Whoops! I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. What is your name? I'm, I'm Bernie. Um, <clears throat> I am Bernie, Herr Obler. Reporting for duty. You are a silly man. Oh, right. I was going to try to watch that. I don't think I can work with you. No, no, wait, please. I, I do have a reputation as a bit of a whimsic, uh, a goofball. But I can be very reliable and serious most of the time. Very well. Come this way. Here we go. The Gestapo and the goofball. Go what? How dare you make light of that most horrific point in human history? You should never joke about that war and what it cost. You will show some respect for the people who suffered through that time. You're absolutely right. I, I apologize. It was very insensitive of me, and it, it won't happen again. That is better. We should have won that war. Come with me. 
Well, careful, it's hard to see in this light or, or the lack of it. Come in the, into the office. What is this on the desk? Uh, this is my resume. I, I thought since you were going to restaff, I would toss my hat in the ring. And what position are you applying for? Whatever you think I would qualify for. I don't know. You have too honest a face. Huh? Hello, PB&J Logistics. Who is this? Well, my name is Bernie. Um, how may I help you? You can't tell me when my stuff will arrive, you rotten excuse for a human being! I have been waiting for 17 days for my stuff to arrive! Wait, wait, hold, hold on. Let, let me get my manager. I have waited long enough. I am not going to put up with this! I he, demand some Here! I will not speak with him. He needs some answers. You give him the answers. Do you know who I am? Me? You want the job? Show me how you would deal with it. I know a uh, can I handle it in my own way? Impress me. All right. Here goes. Hey, 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 what's the deal here? I'm sitting in my office eating a meatball sandwich when all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. I run out here, spilling marinara sauce on my clean white shirt. Everyone's jumping around saying there's this joker on the phone making a lot of noise. I told him, give me that phone. I'll deal with it, bozo. So what's the problem? And it better be important. You have my stuff. I have your stuff. I came out to your house and I took your stuff. Don't Oh, now that's more like it. Do you have a name, a license number, tracking ID, anything like that? No. Well, now that makes my job harder, doesn't it? Uh, I suppose. You have a receipt? Yes. What's the number? AAM8964J. Got it. Now, I will go and look this up on my clipboard and then find the file. This is going to take some time. I will call you when I find it, probably tomorrow. Tomorrow? It is the best I can do. Take it or leave it. My lawyers are going to be all over you. Tell them to get in line. I've had a very bad year. <sighs> Tomorrow? Hey, you work with me, I'll work with you. You cross me, I'll take you down. Tomorrow, then. All right, now i got to clean my shirt. How was that? That was remarkable. When can you start? Well, you'll need to work that out with Freddy, my agent at the church temps. Very well. I will speak with him. In the meantime, take these. What are those? The fuses for this place. Let's get the lights back on in here. Where's the fuse box? In the warehouse next to the door. I'm on it. And Bernie said, let there be light. Oh, oh, that's so much better. Whoa, where did all this stuff come from? This place was empty before, now it's packed to the gills. You can't even see the ceiling. <laughs> Mr. Obler, where did all that stuff... I spoke with Freddy, and you will be hired on the first thing on Monday. Really? That's great. What's the pay? A salary of 30,000 a year. <laughs> Three zero a year? That's perfect. That's great. Thank you. Here is a list of all the customers who are waiting for the stuff. I will send them an email telling them that their stuff has been located, and we will let them know when we will deliver it. Okay. There is a PDF file on the desktop. You will attach it to each email when you send it out. What's in it? Oh, just a legal disclaimer. You don't need to read it. Yeah, I, I don't follow legalese very well. Get those sent out so that should take you to the end of the day. Right away. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Just don't make me regret it. Hey, hey, honey. I got good news. I'm in here. We're going out to eat tonight. Oh, okay. I'll get my shoes on. Uh, better put on your fancy shoes. We're going out big to celebrate. Celebrate? What? I got hired on. I am now, or will be, next week, the official branch manager. 
Bernie, that's great. Your interview went well. Oh then. yeah, it went great. And you didn't have to use any funny voices. Uh, well, I maybe just one, but only really, really briefly. Oh, Bernie, you didn't. I had to. And he hired you anyway. He hired me because of it. He said it was remarkable. Really? Well, if he liked it. He loved it. It pays thirty grand a year. Thirty thousand. Yeah, and with your teacher salary, we we should be doing okay. That's wonderful. I- I'll get dressed. Where's the clicker? On the coffee table. Oh yeah. B&J Logistics is in the news again. What? Only two weeks after arrests were made here in the local office of PB&J Logistics, the National Corporation has filed bankruptcy and will be closing all of its offices. you got to be kidding me. This closure will affect hundreds of employees nationwide. Why would they hire me on when they were shutting down? Hey, Penny, hold off on those shoes. I'm putting on a dress. Well, take it off. Why? They're closing down. Closing down? Who is? PB&J. They they filed bankruptcy. What? Why would Obler hire you? I don't know. Another report of ransomware has affected thousands of corporate computers, mainly in the medical industry. Ransom? There is a new upgrade you can download to protect your computer. Oh, my gosh. It, It fits. Those weren't emails I was sending out. Honey... I could be in a lot of trouble. What? If I don't figure out something, I, I, I could end up in jail. Bernie! I'm sorry, Bernie is not here. Very well. Wait a minute. Who are you? I am your conscience. Nonsense, I don't have one. Oh, yes, you do. You, you tried to kill me. You neglected me. You starved me. You left me for dead. But I am still here. I didn't die. I am glad to hear it. But I did shrivel up smaller and smaller until all that is left of me is an eye. A single eye that is watching you. Never winking. Never blinking. Nonsense. You tried to cover me with a patch, but I am not looking out. I'm looking into your soul. If you are just an eye, how is it you can talk with me? Oh, uh, I'm talking directly into your brain. I am your conscience, remember? I know what you are thinking. I know what you are doing. I am going through paperwork. You are planning to frame Bernie. How am I planning that? With all the stuff in the warehouse. How do you know about that? I am your conscience, remember? That is all the stuff you stole from the people you were supposed to move. No, that is not true. You are planning to ransom their own stuff back to them. And you plotted to frame poor Bernie for your heinous crime. You will never prove it. I planned it too carefully. I hid the stuff in the warehouse when he thought he was here alone. And now he is the one who sent out the ransom emails. It all falls back on him. Well, that about clears it up for me. How about you, officer? Yeah, that's a slam dunk as far as I can see. We have your confession all right here on digital audio. Book him, Dano. Hey, this is not funny. Well, I should say so. These are very serious charges. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. And so another arrest has been made at the local office of PB&J Logistics. Thanks in a big part to one brave man who went out of his way to help the police expose the ransom racket that is being run against the people who trusted the company with their personal belongings. And he is with me now. What is your name? Me? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just the temp. And so, he must move on to his next assignment, hoping that one day he will find the job, that special employer who will embrace him and adorn him with benefits as they open up an opportunity for full-time employment. Until then, he is destined to drift through the riptide of the corporate world as just a clump of flotsam and jutsam, known more freely as a temp. The Temp was written and directed by Michael Wilhelm. In the cast, you heard Michael Wilhelm as Bernie, Lorraine Knox as Penelope, Larry Bauer as the narrator, Jaden Moore as the guard, Ralph, and the policeman, Scott Kump as Fred and the nasty man, Bridget Bogdan as Glenadine and the television reporter, 
Teresa Bauer as the old woman and Dennis Nichols as Obler. Audio engineering by Scott Kump. Live sound effects performed by Callie Swanigan and Josette Wilhelm. This has been a Double M production in affiliation with All for One Productions in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The temp was recorded before a live audience. Hello, this is Michael Wilhelm out of character to ask a favor. Could you rate our show on whatever app, platform, or website you're listening to our show on? This would actually make our show more accessible to people who don't know about us. And if you really want to get on my good side, could you write a review or post a comment? I appreciate any effort you make to get the word out there that the temp is online and it's a lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying the show. I promise there's more to come. Thank you. You can listen to classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre, and the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night.